Hi guys, and welcome to The Family Fudge. Today I have a highly requested video for you. Today I'm sharing kid-friendly Christmas-themed breakfasts. First up, I'm going to be making the cherry cheesecake danish. It looks really fancy, but it's super easy and quick to throw together. You're going to need two cans of crescent dough, you're also going to need some cherry pie filling, about three quarters of a block of room temperature cream cheese. You're also going to need some sliced almonds, a quarter cup of powdered sugar, two tablespoons of granulated sugar. Now this last part is optional, but I really like to add some almond extract to this dish. I love the combination of almonds and cherries. It is so good. You're going to start by opening your cans of crescent dough. We're actually gonna keep it in its roll and cut it up. Each container of crescent dough is going to get about eight pieces. And you're gonna to wanna to cut this carefully without squishing it. I like to use a very sharp knife and go back and forth in a sawing motion very carefully. Next, you're going to arrange these on top of a prepared pan. I like to use a cookie sheet lined with a little bit of parchment paper just so it doesn't stick. And at this point, I'm also going to preheat my oven at 350 degrees. Then you're going to take one of the pieces of dough, flatten it out to create your star shape and the trunk of your Christmas tree. You can shape these by hand or use a cookie cutter if you have one. Now I'm going to set this aside and get started on my cream cheese filling. I'm going to use my hand mixer to mix up my cream cheese just a bit. Then I'm going to add my granulated sugar and my almond extract. Now I like to use about a quarter teaspoon, but you can use whatever you prefer. Once that is nice and combined, I'm going to set that aside. Now back to our dough. I'm going to take my fingers and create a little well in the center of each of my rounds. We're going to make some room for the yummy cream cheese and the cherry, because in my book, the more filling, the better. Next, I'm going to spoon a little bit of our cream cheese mixture into the center of our dough, and then I'm gonna to top that with one of our cherries. And now it's time to get this in the oven. Mine was done in about 10 minutes, but I watched it very closely because it's not gonna taste good if it's burnt. Once out of the oven, you can go ahead and mix up your glaze. I like to take powdered sugar with a little bit of water and just whisk it up. Now, if you have any of your cream cheese filling left over, you can definitely add this into your glaze as well. That will make it even better. Next, I'm going to drizzle my glaze all over my danishes and then top it with my sliced almonds. Now you can serve this warm or cold or even the next day. I like to serve this with a tall glass of milk. So next up, we have our healthier option, a beautiful fruit platter with some yogurt parfaits on the side. For this, you're going to need a lot of kiwis, and it really just depends on how many people you're trying to serve. For my size family, I needed about six kiwis. After the kiwis, you can really use any fruit that you prefer. I really like raspberries because they look like little ornaments on my tree, and I also like to use pineapple for the star and for other places around my tree. For the yogurt parfaits, I'm going to use some strawberries, some vanilla yogurt, and I have some special toppings. I'm going to be topping this with some gingerbread cookies and a really fun Christmas tree sprinkle. Starting with the fruit platter, I'm gonna go ahead and get all of my kiwis peeled and sliced. And of course, you're gonna to wanna to arrange these in a Christmas tree shape. So now you just add your other fruits and there you have it. Now for the yogurt parfaits, I'm gonna start by slicing up my strawberries and getting them into the bottom of my cups. I like to use a short clear cup for my parfaits. That way you can see all of the yummy layers. After my strawberries, I'm going to add a layer of vanilla yogurt. You can really use any yogurt you prefer, but I like the classic vanilla here. It goes really well with my topping. I'm going to take some of these Belvita gingerbread breakfast cookies and crush them up. These breakfast cookies go really well with yogurt because they're not too sharp on the ginger flavor, if you know what I mean. So I'm gonna add this on top of my yogurt, and then this part is optional, but I like to add a little Christmas tree sprinkle on top. It just makes it really fun and cute. I know the kids will love it. And there you have it, a healthier option for Christmas breakfast. Next, we're gonna be making some creamy, dreamy crock pot hot chocolate. 
If you've never made hot chocolate in the crock pot, you will be amazed. It is so good. Here's what you're going to need. Six cups of milk, one can of sweetened condensed milk, one and a half cups of half and half. And if you really wanted to make this decadent, you could use cream. And you also need one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. And finally, you need one bag of chocolate chips. Now you could use semi-sweet or milk chocolate chips, but I really like the semi-sweet. It makes it extra chocolatey. And you may also wanna have a few garnishes or toppings for your hot chocolate as well. I really like to put whipped cream on mine, maybe a little bit of cinnamon or marshmallows or even a candy cane would be delicious. Yeah. So now that all of our ingredients are measured out, Mackenzie and Lily are going to help put them in the crock pot and whisk them up really well. We're going to cover this and cook it on low for about two hours. And we are gonna stir this occasionally. Once it's hot and the chocolate chips are melted, it's ready to serve. Now, if it looks like your hot chocolate is getting too thick or if it tastes too sweet, you can always add more milk. And of course, don't forget the garnishes. And we're also going to be making a three cheese grits casserole. It is so delicious and satisfying and perfect for a special occasion like Christmas brunch. Now I really like to make this a day in advance and then just bake it off right before I want to serve it. That makes it really convenient. So here's what you're going to need. One cup of half and half, three cups of milk, one cup of grits, half a stick of butter, one and a half cups of cheddar cheese and one and a half cups of Monterey Jack cheese. You also need one egg, a teaspoon of garlic powder, five ounces of Parmesan cheese, and salt and pepper to taste. So now we're gonna get all of our ingredients ready. I've got Mackenzie here Hi. and she's gonna help me to grate the cheese. Like Lily said, we need one and a half cups of each but we're actually gonna take half a cup of the cheddar and half a cup of the Monterey Jack and reserve that to top the casserole. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead, Mackenzie, get started grating, but be very careful. So now that we have all of our cheese grated and all of our other ingredients ready, Mackenzie's gonna go ahead and grease the pan. Good job, Mackenzie. Thanks. So now that our pan is ready, I'm gonna set it aside and I'm actually gonna do the next part. In a large pot over medium heat, I'm gonna start by adding my half and half and my milk. And then I'm going to wait for this to boil. Next, I'm going to turn down the heat a bit and add my grits and my butter. And I'm going to whisk this constantly for about one minute, just so no lumps form. Next, I'm going to place my lid on and let this cook for about five to seven minutes. And I am gonna come back and stir it occasionally. When the time is up, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my lid and mix in my beaten egg and all three cheeses. But I am going to reserve a bit of the Monterey Jack and the cheddar to top the casserole before I bake it. Next, I'm going to add in my garlic powder and my salt and pepper. Now this is to your taste, of course. Next, I'm going to pour this into my prepared 9 by 13 baking pan and then top it with the remaining cheese. Now, if I'm not gonna cook this right away, this is where I would stop. I would go ahead and put some aluminum foil on it and stick it in the fridge until I'm ready to cook it. 
But when I do want to cook it, I'm going to put it in the oven at 350 for about 20 to 25 minutes or until it's golden brown. When it's cooled down enough, you can dig in. Now usually on Christmas morning, I will also add some scrambled eggs, maybe some sausage on the side, and then I really like to add some green onion or hot sauce to mine. Last up, I have one of the easiest ways to make a Christmas themed breakfast. You just need a few ingredients and it's really not even a recipe, it's more of a technique. All you're going to need are some eggs, some bread, a splash of milk, some salt and pepper, and some butter. Now for these ingredients, it really just depends on how many people you're trying to serve. So you could definitely double or triple this if you need to. Now to make this Christmas themed, I'm going to use some cookie cutters. I found this set at Walmart and it was under $3. It came with a large Christmas tree and a smaller Christmas tree, and I'm going to use both. First, I'm going to use the larger size, and then I'm going to use the smaller size in the center. Now just as a side note, you guys, I always like to save the outside of the bread for other recipes. You could make breadcrumbs for stuffing or put it in French toast, things like that. Next, I'm going to prepare my eggs. I'm just gonna crack them into a bowl, add a little bit of milk, some salt and pepper, and whisk them up. Next, in my large skillet over medium heat, I'm gonna go ahead and add a pad of butter and spread that all around. I'm going to add all of my pieces of bread, then I'm gonna very carefully add my scrambled egg mixture into the centers of my bread. I'm gonna cook this for about one minute and then flip it over. It's really just that fast. Now along with this, I also like to toast the little Christmas tree pieces. And to tell you the truth, those parts are probably my favorite. Okay guys, there you have it. Super cute, but easy, kid-friendly Christmas breakfast ideas. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.